would you kindly hug someone, show them some love before we go further? That looks so good. Leave no one untouched unless they don't want to be touched. What the world needs now is love. And don't look at what I'm wearing when you touch me. Love is patient. Love is kind. That person near you may not have church clothes. So cover them with love. Clap your hands for love today. You may be seated. Good morning to all of you. I said good morning to all of you. Trying to bring some of the morals back into the family. Because everybody's so spiritual that they're naturally pitiful. You got to learn to say excuse me when folk are talking. Good night. If you're eating, would you like some? If they're paying the tab, can I leave the tip? So look at somebody who you've been sit sitting next to for over a half hour and say good morning. Ask him, can I have some money? Go on, ask him, can I? <laughs> Those songs say, he's sweet, I know. I ain't gonna sing, he's sweet, I know. Storm clouds may rise. Strong winds may blow, but I'll tell the world, I don't hear nobody wherever I may go that I found a savior. Touch somebody and tell me he's sweet, I know. It's really a good morning. This could be the beginning of the best years of your life. Your best years are ahead of you. Your worst years are behind you. The words of the song says, I had heartaches like this before. Only old saints know this. Disappointments by the score. I claim the victory at last. Because this too shall pass. Somebody with power and authority just wake up and jump up and shout the worst is over. See, some of you, some of you said it, but it didn't resonate because church is like a ritual for most of us. Whatever the pastor say, we repeat it, but we don't feel what he or she feels. But this time when you say it, say it to someone, watch their behavior, and then you got 30 seconds to praise your God Look, somebody tell them the worst is over. Come on, come on.
the current. Play it, Berlin. This is a breakthrough Sunday. And some of you so busy looking. Praise them, young adults. tell you what's bothering me some of you need a miracle and you're still acting pitiful you are the reason why you can't get it but I'm gonna extend 30 more seconds for you that need rules over your head employment healing in your body whatever you need it's in your posture You've got 30 seconds to praise the Lord right where you are. And if you ain't got no footwork, put your hands together. Coming back, that's it. When the music stops, you have mouths and hands and... Hallelujah. Well, this feels like the windows of heaven are open. The fire's falling tonight. I get joy, joy, joy in my soul since Jesus made everything right. I gave him my old filthy garments and he exchanged it for a robe of pure white. I'm feasting on manna from heaven. That's why I'm happy tonight be seated in the presence of the Lord blessed be the name of our God for he is high and lifted up and his train fills the temple 
I have a few observations and I want to move quickly, but I feel the glory of the Lord. Byron Cage sings a song, the presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. I can feel him in the atmosphere. Would you forgive my uh, disruptiveness one more time? I want to use your mouths as prophetic instruments and tools. I am a prophet and some of you probably are as well. But I'm going to have you look at your neighbor and say one word that's broken up in two words. When you say it, you will have spoken for the rest of their year. Just look at somebody and shout, Breakthrough! It's good to see men with mouths. Ain't nothing like a church with some men in it who will open their mouths. You may be seated. I hear that word in my ear. Breakthrough. Let me please move into the acknowledgement of our guest. We have several guests this morning. Shabak applaud their presence and their being here with us. Do better than that in Jesus' name. These first visitors have watched us by way of YouTube. That's their connection to us. They are from Danville, I believe, Illinois. Franklin Bourne and PJ, where are you? Please stand so we can love on you. Y'all see them? Let's love on them.
from right here in our city. They are guests of our own Amber Jernigan. Stand, Amber. She's a great daughter here. Clap for Amber. Her guest is Yolanda Powell. Where's Yolanda? There goes Yolanda. Can y'all clap for Yolanda? Newly named 3D Church. They took our other name there. Pastor Raheem Warren has two guests here. And I'm glad that they understand their divine connection to us. Adrian and Justin Rowland, where are you? Adrian and Justin, there they are. Let's love on these two gentlemen. They're from our sister church in Leesburg. We're excited. These people are from none other than the great Bishop Derek McCray's Church Experience Christian Center. They are guests of uh, Bishop Hall, which is myself, and Howard Gums, believe it or not. This is our guest. Scooby, where you at, Scooby? Scooby. There goes, oh, my man. Hey, y'all clap for Scooby over there. I'm excited about that. Now, I ain't going to lie. Don't worry about why we call him Scooby. But I'm excited about it kept his word and came and visited us. Miami, Florida is where these persons are from. He is a guest of Jess Marie. Stand, my daughter, Jess Marie. Where you at, baby? Clap for Jess. Her guest is Anthony Martinez. Anthony Martinez. And he wearing some pink, too, so somebody told him what was going on. Yeah, that's good looking out. Orlando, Florida, their guest of Chef Nina. I don't know if Chef is here, but she is a member. Is Chef Nina in the building? She's not, but she is one of our members. She is a culinary, uh, 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 yeah, 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 guru, busy all day or night, uh, making food for celebrities, stars, politicians, me. She has a gift. Michael Self. Where's Michael Self? Michael Self, right there in the back. Let's clap for Michael. <laughs> Trinity Baptist Church, Washington, D.C. Wow. I'm excited. Again, they are guests of Crystal Mays. Stan Crystal, Deaconess Mays. Reverend Gianna Jackson and Dwayne Edwards, where are you? Let's clap for them. It's good to see Trinity Baptist. Y'all clap and scream a little louder than that. YouTube Connect, Apopka, Florida. They live in Apopka, but met us through YouTube, not the church. It's De De Devory. I hope I said that right. Devory or Devory. Malcolm, where are you? Now, stop a minute. How do I say your name? Devery. All right. All the way YouTube. We're living here in the Popka. Devery Malcolm. Let's thank God for Devery. And I see other pastors. They hit me all the time. Why don't you let your secretary do that? No. A owner of a restaurant should come out and acknowledge guests. We'll do it. Now, when the church gets too big, y'all won't hear me doing this. There'll be somebody on the screen saying something real nice and fancy for all y'all, and your face will flash on there. We'll take your picture. All right, y'all think I'm playing. We're going to snap a picture in the lobby, put it in a reel, and we're going to put you on there. That's the way we're going to acknowledge you. All the way from Coco, Florida, there are guests of Bree Neal. Bree, where are you? Bree, 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 where are you? Stan Bree. Bree Neal is a member. Uh-oh, hold on. Say it again. But you are Bree. That's what I'm making. She's not a member yet, but she keeps bringing guests. I'll keep you. You don't have to join. Just keep bringing me guests. T Tamara Johnson. And Desiree, Desiree Newton, Desiree, Desiree, can y'all clap for them in Jesus' name? On October the 16th, one of my faithful daughters, she barely misses a service, Sister Nikita Nazatol Stan, was her birthday.
On October the 18th, Glovita, better known as Glow, Stan, was her birthday. Jayla Ferguson turns 13 years old today. Can we clap for Jayla? Wave Jayla, wave Jayla, wave, smile Jayla. Thank you. I'm gonna stop these kids from looking so mean all the time. Even when they dance, they be fighting. I'm gonna say these two words and I wanna hear loud screams. Holy Convocation 2024. As a pastor, I don't stand before you as kind and careful as the other leaders. I stand with orders. Number one, it begins Wednesday, my favorite day. I don't hear anybody of the week. I wanted to have it here, but the powers that be say once again, we can't get them in here. So you all know where we're going. Just leave it there. We're heading over to where we were last year. I need every member and visitor who have visited this church there with us on Wednesday. It begins. I want the first day to be the best day. We have a guest, Bishop Brandon Jacobs will be with us from Hammond, y'all clap, Hammond, Indiana. While I am talking, because I didn't get the tape, I want Lamar or the powers that be to find a high hooping YouTube clip of him and let me know when you have it. And of SY Younger, y'all should think for me, but I'll think on the scene. Because I want them because my church ain't into all these visiting preachers and famous folk. But I want y'all to know these gentlemen, they are young, younger than I. They're in their 40s. One just turned 40. They can preach the gospel. They are also university grads. I don't have seminary and grads. We would not bring you any trash, only treasure. So on Wednesday night, he will be preaching the gospel. I want you there with visitors. I want you to go to the church's Facebook, mine after church, and post the flyer and invite people all day Monday and Tuesday. All we talk about is holy what? Convocation. Holy convocation. It's going to be on Powers Drive, right? Right? Isn't it going to be over there? What is it called? Orlando West, uh, Bishop Keith Hicks was kind to let us utilize his building again. Will y'all clap for Bishop Keith Hicks? No, clap better for people. All right, the doors open. You can attend none of the day seminars or anything if you are not registered. I tell this church every year registration is important. Do not try to get in using my name or showing your pen or, bat or, or an elder's badge. You will not get in the day services. Night services are free to the public. Now, I don't know how this happened. Very unusual, but I'm holding a meeting. It will not change. But when, Wednesday night, we're going to party at 11 o'clock. Put the flyer up, please. At 11 o'clock, uh, there should be a flyer going up now. At 11 o'clock, these we are having a midnight musical at the church with our own vicars. I don't hear nobody. Bishop elect Rockmore. I still don't hear anybody. I don't know Ray, but I know him. But he will be a speaker. And my cousin is coming all the way from New York. Professor James Hall. I don't hear nobody. Hearts of Worship and so many more. This is Wednesday night. Now, mostly we party on weekends, but this is extremely unusual. And I just want everybody in the world to know this has nothing to do with me.
Nothing, whoever did this knows nothing about parties. Nothing. But we gonna sacrifice, amen? And we gonna let the good times roll because I used to party in the world and I partied on whatever the day they had free weed. I don't care what day it was. If they say come over Monday, Y'all ain't never had no house, house parties on the weekdays? Y'all just too saving me. It started with boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. See, I knew y'all knew. Look at some of the depot. He shouldn't even know that. That was back in my days of sin. Now, what I should know is Jesus, the notorious just, please us with your lyrical thesis, because we just chillin', come on, just feel. Now, I should not know that. I don't want y'all to get me twisted. I can do it, for real. And my children got that from somewhere. But we gave it over to the Lord, and he worked it out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But that is going to be Wednesday, so I want you to tell everyone who likes music, likes to get down, have a good time, go back to choirs and etc., that we will be open right after. We're going to be on the time schedule Wednesday. Right after that, we're going into it and have a good time. Amen? Thursday night, we have another guest speaker. He is right now trailblazing, Bishop S.Y. Younger. Come on, y'all have to. Now, we're going to church. Leave that fly up. There go all the speakers. S.Y. Younger is from Lynchburg. His bishop is my cousin. His grandmother is my only spiritual mother in the world, 91 years old. I just did her birthday this year. All right? And this is the woman who prays for me every day and watches me 12 hours a day. Every day. So I don't need nobody talking about God told me pray for you. I'm good. I'm covered. She into me. She into God. We good. Folk want to pray for you that are not into you. How you going to pray for somebody you ain't even into? What's my last sermon? Uh, don't pray. Let somebody that's into the ministry pray for the ministry. Amen. So he'll be here and he's bringing his trombone player. Let me tell y'all something. I don't have no special nights, but if I ain't gonna dance on Thursday, my name ain't Todd Hall. Last year, I had foot surgery and still danced with a boot on. This year, I'm across these feet in Jesus' name. But I can't wait to them. They're gonna teach y'all the lesson on Thursday now. So y'all might as well listen to what I'm talking about. Amen. We're going to have a good time. And that old Christopher Bishop who's going to play for uh, Jacobs, he's going to teach you all the lesson now on, on Wednesday. We all need to learn up. Out of here. If you can't learn, you're the dumbest person in the room. I want to be around people that make me better. Then Friday night, the man standing before you will be the speaker. And hopefully, 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 the conference is called Unleashed. I'm going to preach Let Me Go. It's Transformers Unleashed. I'm going to preach Let Me Go. So I'm already telling you what I'm preaching in advance. So we're going to have a glorious time. The people start coming in. Last thing about Holy Convocation. I want all of my people to be nice. Even if you're faking. Mothers and everybody. Put your dentures in and smile at everybody. I don't want to see one mean mugging mother on... Uh, during Holy Convocation, seriously. I'm very, very, read my face. I'm very serious. Don't call nobody demons, don't bother nobody. 
Let the preachers take care of their job. Amen. We need y'all, according to the Bible, when we call, it said, call for the morning women. Let us call for you. Okay, we have no problem calling on y'all because I love y'all, but we must learn how to entertain strangers because some might be angels. I don't hear nobody unaware. Look at somebody and tell them, bring your best self. Here, bring your best self. Now, about a week ago, I didn't preach, but on Wednesday, I played a tape of Corey. He was singing in the praise team. Y'all missed it? Do we still have that tape of Corey singing on the praise team? Somebody give me a hand sign or something. Yes? No. Which one? Man, I hate when people just give me signals like I know what y'all talking about. But he was singing on the praise team, so... He didn't know somebody took it. He don't know where it came from. Nobody was snitching. I wanted it. And I wanted another one. So I got another one. Man, you're really blessing the church. You a real member. See, people don't believe that. You ain't just here on Sunday. Like, you a real son of the gospel. You, you, you're, you're a man of your word. You said, Bishop, I'm going to be with you. We're going to grow this. I'm here with you to the end. You are a man of your word. And most musicians are flimsy. They run after the money, not after the cross. But our musicians, they are faithful. Can we, uh, can we uh, play what I sent you? Just play it. Yeah. All right, let's go. Remember, y'all just li listen to One more time. Y'all clap your hands for Corey McCree. Woo-wee. To all of our leaders, we salute them. Clap for all of our leaders. Did not Pastor Jay preach on last Sunday? No, for real. The Sunday before that, uh, Reverend uh, Joseph Clayton did, an, did a splendid job. Dr. Mixon was preaching in Mount Dora for a group of women. Y'all clap for her. This ministry has a lot of precious value in it. We just got to keep digging till we strike oil. People that want to be heard shouldn't be heard. People that have it that don't should. Because those who want to believe they have it better than those who are up. Those who don't figure that their life is not up to par, so I don't want to, which shows a level of humility. That's a level of regard for leadership and humility. I want to thank God for one of my sons being here this morning, Reverend Joshua Butler. Stand, Josh Butler. Y'all clap for him. Thank you. I love him. He's in school now, going after his doctorate and et cetera. 
Uh, he went into his class and started talking about me, and the whole class knew me, so he FaceTimed me, praying I would answer. So he didn't look like a liar, and the Lord told me, call him back. I don't know why the Lord said, call him back. I said, Josh, no, I ain't answer no phone. I called back. He was sitting with his class. Pray the Lord, that's him. That's my papa. I said, you got it? I got it, man. Bye-bye. And we hung up. But he travels all the way to Cleveland, Ohio for this class. And we want to pray for him. I don't hear them want to pray for him on that journey. To his left is probably one of the greatest voices. Even in this city in which we live, we don't compete. We don't compare. We complete. He's like a son of mine. He still wants me to teach him how to play chess. But the reason why I'm going to have him stand and I want y'all praying for him every day for the next few weeks is he just lost his mother. Holy music. He just lost his mom. I was out of town. I couldn't get there. I didn't even know till I got back. But that's a very sensitive issue, especially when you have a great relationship. Are y'all clapping for your mother? Reverend Godfrey Dickinson Stan, man, we want you to know we love you. Come on, I'm saying we're praying for you. We're gonna undergird you. We here. I am. I'm not going to lie to you. You know me personally. I ain't here for a lot of people. That's just not how I get down. It's hard to get in my circle, but you in there. And I know what it is because I lost my biological mother. I know what it is. Elder Ferguson lost the love of his life, the first love, which was his mama. And I grew up with his mother, I and Patty, since he was born. And he became mine. So... Uh, we'll be praying for you for a long time. Ever want to go out and eat and just shoot the breeze, cry, or say a few things you can't say in the midst of your church? My ears are good enough to handle it. Can y'all clap for him and his family? Clap with some passion. Now that I'm finished being an announcer... No, Dr. Tracy does a fine job. Y'all clap for Dr. Tracy. But no one can reinforce like a pastor those things that are very urgent. Very urgent. We want to just acknowledge our senior father today. And his lovely wife, Dr. Barbara. And I want to make one more announcement, then I'm going to teach this. One of my favorite people in the world is here this morning. We miss her. Dr. Gloria Mixon is back at home. So I know I got some prayer under me all week. I'm good. I've got extra reinforcements under me. And uh, God is a miracle working God. Oh, let us pray for Elder Jonathan Vickers, our praise leader. His mother had surgery this morning. They thought they weren't going to do it. They took it immediately at 6 a.m. She's already out of surgery. We released him to go be by his mother. Let's send some love in their direction. Y'all should be cool because... I don't know too many pastors with a memory like mine that want to acknowledge people. Normally they want to get up, do the offering and preach and then do a third offering. That's what they want to do. But I'm up here and I really want us to be a family. Look at your neighbor and tell them I believe in this ministry. I told y'all that I'm going to be in training in a minute, and before the year's out, we're going to hear a sermon by our newly elder, Donitra Eddings. We will be hearing from her before the year is out. And I want the musicians hitting her hard. Hit her with everything you have. Because women perform better when they get support. God, I'm telling you now, Women walk better with girdles. They hide better with slips. Spandex. Pull it together.
But until they can afford it, y'all leave them alone and you men just come to church with your eyes closed. When you see yourself looking in direction, just tearing your head. That's why every holy church back in the day was a storefront because y'all kept running folk out because they didn't dress like y'all. Y'all kept the sinners out. But we're going to make room for them until the fish has been caught. Then you clean it. Then you eat it. But you can't change it till you catch it. Amen. So don't make my fish get off my hook. I want a fish sandwich. Put our decree on the screen, please. If you are a member, you know you should be standing. If you are a guest that want to participate, please do. Because you may go from being a guest to being a member. This is a decree that God gave me. That I want us to read because the more we say it, we will become it. Most churches are just uh, uh, places for people to lodge and hang out. And chill and become cliques and groups. So they're members of the same church, but they only hang out with one group. I'm trying to break all of those devils because we are one church. Amen. Can we read? Come on. Remember that the relationship between a pastor and the congregation is a partnership with mutual respect and support being the essential, being essential for the health of the church. Let that digest. We'll read it one more time. Let that digest. And I like that as I look out there, about 40 of you know it by heart. I, I just recognize that some of you still cheating. Got to look up and missing punk. Let's read it again. Remember, the relationship between the pastor and the congregation is a partnership with mutual respect and support being essential for the health of the church. Can you clap your hands for that? You may be seated. We're still talking about miracles. But what I cannot get over is the statement that when God gives you a miracle, it's to make you a sign that will make your enemies wonder. So if people are checking you out, but don't like you, but can't stop talking about you, it's because you're a sign. I don't hear nobody. And that sign is making them wonder. And they're wondering how you're making it when they know the hell that they're causing in your life how can a person still be calm how can a person still be lovable how can a person still say hello to me when they know i'm stabbing them it's because i'm a walking breathing living i don't hear you talk miracle and god has made me that to become a sign to the earth but to make my enemies wonder how am i still functioning as I am. If you believe you're a miracle, clap for yourself and shout, I'm a miracle. I can't remember everything I preached, but I got it all written down because I'm still been on miracles for a long time. We got miracles in the mud. A miracle in the mess. A miracle in the meal. Y'all ain't talking. A miracle in the drink. And then we went to mature preaching. A miracle found in instructions. Part two. Wednesday we tried to just teach and then the prophetic cut up through this peace. I was like, what just happened? The Lord started speaking to me like I was on the road. I said, what just happened? People holding hands, working for the same people, other people running around. It was just something. I had to stop it. I was like, oh, Lord, he said, hey, 
because they're beginning to eat the meal. Oh, you ought to clap for that because they're beginning to believe what the word is saying. The Bible says in Mark 16, 18, and they went forth preaching the Lord working with them, following the sermon with signs and wonders. John chapter 5. This is from Wednesday. We hear it on Wednesday to experience it on Sunday, but this is going to be an experience. John chapter 5. Verses 1 through 9. Thank you, young adults. I heard it over there. I get happy when they talk. John 5, verses 1 through 9. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, underscore this for you that write, Bethesda. Descriptive, having five porches. The residents are in verse 3. In these five porches lay a great multitude of impotent folk. You won't get that this morning. You should have been here Wednesday, and Wednesday's tape is not on Facebook. Impotent folk, blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. What moved the water? Verse 4. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool. Look at somebody and tell them I'm in a season of stirring. Now if they don't know the Bible they're not with you. Tell them again my season is being stirred. And tell them whatever's my issue has got to go. Troubled the water, whoever then first, after troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he or she had. A certain man was there, which had an infirmity. This is a long time, 38 years, when they saw him lie and knew that he had been there a long time in that case, he said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man, thank you, Bruce, for pushing me, answered and said, Sir, I have no man when the water's trouble to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, now I said this, and I will say this for two folk who scream. I'm very confused that everybody that preaches, but look, you'll learn this in school, has this man paralyzed, but he said, when he's coming. How you getting there? And a lot of you preach what you feel. You said people carried him. That ain't in there. When a person is carried, like the man in Acts chapter 3, who goes to the gate called Beautiful, and he's carried there every day, it says he was assisted. See, that's why you need Wednesday, because you wouldn't be so quiet. You would have learned what all of this meant. Because some of you are this man. You making it without help. And when you look at you got $10 left. You amazed because it's like I don't know where I got this from. You look in the purse. You get excited. There go $50. When did I? You get excited. You go check your balance and there's an extra $50, $200. You be like Lord let me withdraw this right now. The impotent man answered, sir, I have no man when the water's troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am, very confusing, coming, another step if down before me. Jesus said unto him, rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. In verse 9 for screamers, he follows instructions. 
He didn't leave his bed there. He didn't just walk away from something. See, some of you rather walk away from a thing when the Lord says take it with you because it's a part of the proof that you made it from where you are. Some of you got a lot of mouth, but you have no testimony. To have a testimony, you have to have a piece of something that you went through so that when folks say prove it, you can pull it out. I don't want to preach like this because y'all. Whenever any area of my life, Prophet, Brother, Bishop, Todd Hall is broken, I stay away from it. I don't touch it. I stay away. When you hurt me, I'm done. And when I'm done, I'm done. Y'all are crazy. I'm even talking to some of my boys. If that's the way you live, something wrong with you. That's just not real life. And then people want you to be through with who they through with. They ain't hurt me. Now, if they're demons, they will. See, some of you want to defend something bad, but it's going to hurt you too. But let me talk about clean relationships. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just not going to dislike Izzy because you don't like him. Especially when my judgment of him is he's a kind gentleman until proven otherwise. Because if Izzy treated you wrong, something may be wrong with you. Because the only time he jumps out of his bag, let me get out of here, is when somebody does something out of the way. You got to know who you're defending. Because if not, it says a lot about you. I stay away from it. whatever's broken and wrecked in my life. I don't go back to the past. Well, let me read this scripture. Don't put nothing on the screen. And let's see if 10 of you who are prophetically inclined will jump just to say you understand. Paul would have not made it after the shipwreck if he didn't float on broken boards and pieces. The proof that he made it was he had a piece of the ship. Y'all ain't. Oh, y'all. And some of y'all. No, no. Being wet is not proof. You could have did that in a shower, in a tub. But if you come away with a piece of the boat. God will deliver you from your past, but let your past still be present. Let's go further. I'm delivered from you, but you can still be in my space and not bother me. I'm delivered. You are not delivered till you can face it and not feel it. Will you tell somebody what I said? You are not delivered until you can face it and not feel it. Most of the time, if you don't swat at a bee, it won't sting. Once the bee feels that you're a threat to it, it's willing to die by stinging you. Yeah, some of y'all claim you know the Bible and love the word of God, but as I'm teaching and saying some things that you didn't know, you're going to use it in one of your future sermons, but it's never been in you. When I study before I preach it, I let it resonate in me. And if it don't move me, I don't expect it to move you. The man was made whole, took up his bed and walked, followed instructions, and on that same day was the Sabbath. After the man gets healed, Jesus returns back to the man. We're going to just go down to verse 14, and I want to highlight this verse on this afternoon. The verse says, for 10 of you who want to go to the next level afterward... Verse 14 of chapter 5. Verse 14. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple. Look at somebody and tell him at least he was where he belonged. 
if you want your miracle to be maintained, you must keep it in a perfect climate. Prophecy comes to pass, but then it'll leave you if you take it somewhere that God's word did not want it to go. So you got married, now you're divorced because marriage kept you away from the house of God. And God said, that is not what I gave you a spouse for. First family, you are an idiot, but I'm going to leave you alone right on that statement. Because there's no family until there's you and God. God made Adam for him and then determined. Oh, y'all quiet. You don't want to learn it, huh? And then y'all say, but then Adam put Eve first. You are correct. And that's how they got evicted. I need to say to you. I need to say to folk that ain't talking. Bishop, I will come to church more about my family. Uh, listen, stop using an extension of who you are for the reason why you disconnected for who created you to be who you are. See, I can tell who's mature because you're talking. You read Genesis chapter 3, when you go back to seminary, you will hear a conversation that God has with a serpent, a woman, and a man. That's a, that's a conversation. So when all three parties played a part in this sin, God called all three parties. Y'all are quiet now. Look at your neighbor and ask them, what part did you play? Tell them, forget it, none of my business. God called Oh, if you sat and listened to somebody dog your church, you are a party in that situation. I was just sitting there. Negro, please. You wanted to hear what they had to say. Because some of you are drawn to gossip. It's your DNA. Your life is so boring, you need some excitement. You don't make enough money. You don't have quality relationships. You don't live in a nice neighborhood. So I need to sit at a table where everybody is disgusted like me. If I'm helping anyone, say, talk to me, Dr. Hall. He calls all three parties, and in calling all three parties, he asks the woman, what have you done? He asks Adam, what have you done? Adam answered, I hear nobody, it's the woman you gave me. The woman answered, the serpent beguiled me. The serpent ain't say a word. Because it's the one that's quiet that started all this foolishness. Look how quiet it got on there. I ain't got nothing to say. You did it. You did it. I don't talk to nobody. Well, how your name come up? And then you say, I only spoke to one person. Then, yeah, the serpent. Come on, push me. I'm halfway. He didn't ask the serpent anything, so to me, preach this one day, the serpent is the only accountable species in it, because he knows what he did. I did what my nature is. I'm a snake. The two folk you created to be in your image, the man, he is not doing what he's created to do. The woman is not be doing what she was created to do for the man. And the man, y'all cry, is not created, is not doing what he was created to do for you. Man blamed the woman, woman blamed the serpent. God just put an end to it. And this is what God said to the man who's created in his image. He said this, after I gave you a wife and she gonna give you some sons, let me just tell you why you're being put out. And I hope somebody screams on this. He said, because you took her words over my commands. That's what it said. Now, some of you bobbing your head, my wife come first. You better change that because something gonna happen to your wife. You better stop saying my children and making people a God. You got to be careful. Love them, but don't give them God's portion. Because at the end of the day, when you die, you ain't going home.
Genesis 3 and 16, just put it up there because somebody in here without a Bible don't believe what I said. So just put it there. <sighs> Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow. This is a punishment and the conception in sorrow shalt thou have children, which meant you were going to always have kids, but you weren't going to have them in labor. So I'm going to add some labor in there. You was always have a husband, but he would have not been your head. He would not have had rule over you. Y'all would have been equal partners. So I'm going to make the marriage hard and I'm going to make the pregnancy hard. That's your punishment. And your desire will no longer just be for business in me. It'll only be to your husband and he shall rule over thee. So all of you still saying God made me the ruler. You, are, you have her under penalty. I'll leave that alone and we'll move on. Because you don't read the Bible. Oh no, don't look for another scripture. There it go. been to school but there it goes see I wouldn't be in your class you'd be sitting in my class saying professor verse 18 I mean verse 17 I'm sorry you are right verse 17 and unto Adam he said and I'm done because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife y'all looking for another word look at the men head looking deeper And has not eaten of and has eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, saying, Don't eat of it. So because you took her word over my word, cursed is the ground for your sake. And in sorrow you shall eat of it all the days of your life. That's called working yourself to death. And because you mad, you working her to death while still getting her pregnant. I'm sorry, back to uh, John 5, verse 14. The man is in church. Look at somebody and tell him, I made the first step, I'm here. I know y'all love our singing, praise, worship, and dancing, but the word is what we live by, so hang in, hang on. Jesus repeats a part of the saying he told the man, would thou be made whole? Then he said, be thou made whole. So he reintroduces himself to the man by saying, thou art made whole. At that time, the man knows this is the one who I met in my balcony. Jesus gives him another command. Y'all quiet now. This is unfamiliar territory. Sin. Make me preach, Godfrey. No more. Bishop, is that possible? Let me teach it. Sin. Lest a worse thing. What can be worse than what I just got out of? Let me talk to three folk who will jump and push your leader. If you knew you were going to do another thing, you should have kept the thing you had. Because I don't need a chance to come out of that and get into something worse. Oh, y'all don't want me to preach this. So that meant whatever situation he was in, it was bad, but it was not the worst. Some of y'all look lost, your eyebrows. I study psychology. It's not that difficult. Relax, get the creases out your head. Say no more, lest the worst thing has come upon thee. This, this command was given, here we go, I'm almost there, after the miracle had been received. Talk to me, ten of you, that's all. This command was given after the miracle was already received. 
wonder if anyone else ever heard something similar to that. Go to John chapter 8, verse 10 and 11, then we'll go back to 5, and I'll read my notes and let you go. Go back to John chapter 8. Go forward to John chapter 8, uh, verses 10 and 11. When you see something familiar, when I say it, someone jump and you'll be blessed. When Jesus lift, lifted up himself, he saw none but the woman. He said unto her, woman, where are those that accuse you? And she said, I have no man that condemned thee. Hath no man condemned thee? She said, no man, Lord. Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. Go. Let's go back to 10 so I can read it properly because I was rushing to get to 11. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? Verse 11, she said, No man, Lord. Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go, help me read. Don't have me be the only one reading that as if I'm the only one that sinned before. Some of y'all should talk to me because we sin together. Talk to me. What kind of sin? It's, it's simple things. Boy, you say sin to black people, they go to the extreme. Look at some of y'all who think things ain't a sin. Oh, you mean just a little cuss word. Little? When cussing become little? What's a little drink? What's a little sex? What's a little lie? Oh, ain't nobody talking. If you're going to go to hell knowing you're going, don't go for a little charge. Y'all ain't talking. I brought that up, and I'm methodical in my approach. I brought that up because I want to see two people scream, male and female, who love good teaching, because the woman who was caught in adultery, she was supposed to get stoned. The book of Leviticus says this is her penalty. Bring her out in public, and still over in Arabia, in certain places, they dig a hole. See, nobody... And they put the female's entire body in the hole with her head above ground. They then put a bag over her head. And they start stoning her. Some of you would be Rockefeller right now, I promise you. They kick her in the face, they stone her, they hit her with things until she's dead. All of that for adultery? See, Western civilization, which we are, is a little light on the Bible. Eastern, where the Bible is written, they live this better than we do. I wish I had some conversation. Because if you people and I knew that you could get stoned for adultery... Like, for real? You'd be like, oh no, I don't do that. If you see one of your friends stoned one time in a hole, face up, rock stone, you be delivered. You'd be like, I'm done, I'm delivered. What they get for being LGBT over there in Eastern civilization. Western civilization is using the Bible for their survival, but Eastern, they use it as a way of living. Now, let me admit something and see if my daughter or somebody would get on my side. I, 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 um, because of the way I'm raised by my ancestors, y'all made it difficult to live the Bible. Because all y'all kept talking about is what we can't do. Just can't do nothing 
can't watch TV on Sunday, can't play on Sunday. You got the Sabbath day mixed up because it's really on the Saturday. Y'all ain't tell. We can't do nothing but you eating all that pork. You know, we can't do nothing. Got pork in the greens, pork in this, pork bacon, pork over here. High blood pressure. Y'all ain't talk. Uh, gluttoning. You can't sin physically, but you sin eating. Just, just 50 pounds over your weight. Talking about the goodness of the Lord and the land of the living. And you got nerve. Maybe you forgot gluttoning is a sin also. Defiling your temple is not just sexual, it's eating. So you sending young people to hell for sex, you going for sausage. They going to hell for Bacardi, you going for bacon. Because the same scriptures are in the same chapters and verses. That where you talk about homosexuality, the next verses talk about eating crabs and crab cakes and lobsters and shrimp and catfish. Equal sin to LGBTQ, MRA, uh, TUV, WX. Wines. The gist is, it's hard to get out of this world without sinning. It's hard, I'm going to preach, to get out of this world without sinning. Let me say this to three folk with me because I see 10 of you all have sinned. Look somebody and tell them, do you know the definition of all? That means no one excluded. We all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. But if we confess our sin, Come on, he is faithful and just. I can't get help to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us. Yatatabahashia from all unrighteousness. And if any man say he hath not sinned, He, she, they are lying. Now look at some of the self-righteous, but it's been a long time. We ain't asked you how long it's been. Don't brag now. You not delivered. You just aged out. You physically got sick and can't do certain things no more. Don't act like you got delivered. You diverted. It ain't as fun no more. You're now allergic to what you used to be adjusted to. He's a lie and the truth of God, B.C., that I'm almost there, is not in him. Look at someone and tell them, I did what I did but I am not what I've done. Explain, expound one more time. I did it, but it didn't do me. You can smell like weed and never puffed. You can get pregnant now and not have to have sex with a person. You can 
can drive without a license. And you can drive with a license and not have insurance. See, those sinners ain't talking. They just. I want to see it's prophetic. I'm about to tell you you don't have insurance. Now, who got upset that I mentioned LGBT and went off when I made shrimp eat an equivalent to you? It was just my choice to choose shrimp over that. See, some of you ain't being honest. If I had a choice for me, it's lobster. Yours was him and mine's was the, 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 the Alaskan crab legs. Let's enjoy life. Pass the butter. Jesus said to her in verse 11, no man, she said, no man, Lord, Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee, go and sin no more. We're still on miracles, but I want a subtopic, then I'm going to braid this hair nice. Just look at somebody forcefully, but be careful who you point at, because they might have demonic presence in them, and tell them, don't do it again. Just tell them, don't do it again. Now, if the person near you was friendly and they could adjust because they know I'm telling you to do it, say it a little forcefully and say, don't do it again. Have you ever known a child should get beat for something, but instead of beating them, you showed mercy and said, come here. Oh, I don't hear nobody. If you ever touch that one more time. You take them through a verbal thrashing. And it goes from words to action. I want to read what I wrote. And I'm sorry that I'm boring my associate pastor, my executive pastor, not my assistant pastor. Oh, I'm, so, I'm so sorry. I'm about to take a different route to bring a better understanding to how miracles work. And what receiving a miracle from the Lord Jesus actually means. These for educating talkers. There are few instances where a miracle is visible in one's body and etc. But there's also a miracle that isn't seen. Some of us have gone through the exact situation as others have gone through except it killed them. But it could not kill you. Look at somebody and tell them that's a miracle all by itself. That what someone else died from for 38 years you've been living with. Look at somebody and ask them, make that your partner today. Tell them how do how how do you do it? Because some of you look at some of us mysteriously like, how could you be nice to them knowing how they treat you? I could not do that. That's because you're average and I'm anointed. Some of you have been saved 30, 40, 50 years and still nasty. Still me. Still got... I don't understand old gossipers. I really don't. I don't understand mothers who act as childish as their children or fathers who act as dumb as their sons. Stay out of your kids' business. They grown. You don't fight for your grown child. You should have taught them how to fight.
one of my grown kids come home beat up, I'm going to be like, you got whooped. But if I found out it was something growner or stronger than them that shouldn't, I'm going to get involved. But before I get involved, I'm going to ask them, what happened? You ain't going to bring me into a fight that you started. I'm not fighting for your ignorance. Well, I, well, I what? He looked at me and I walked over there. Why you walk over there? He just kept looking at me. You know what you wore. You wanted those looks. Just not from them. See, wise people know how to come back at you. Where was you at the club? You saved. You shouldn't been at the club anyway. You what? what? You witness to Jesus to anybody in that club? Kills me. Y'all be dressing one way, then want to tell people I'm anointed. That just kills me. But let me come back. <laughs> Most of the miracles in the Bible were visible when they were received. Limbs growing. Eyes opening. Come on. The dead being resurrected. Lame people walking, dumb speaking, people that are schizophrenic, demonically possessed, being delivered and clothed and in their right mind. I feel. But there are some invisible miracles. Some of us go through exactly what somebody else went through, but it killed them, but you lived through it. There's a group of people that can't live until they are separated from what's bothering them. I'm going to see this with me. But then there's also a group or a remnant, a small residue of those uh, who find a way to live with it. Until it can't live with us. Oh. See, some of you are slow. You're on the slow bus. We back to Tink Tink. But y'all come back to me. You've got to be so consistent and persistent in your walk with God that what's trying to kill you walks away from you. Most folk who say, I don't have young people, I'm leaving you, they are admitting I couldn't get what I wanted from you. And the way they find out whether you are weak or strong is your response to the term, I'm leaving. Please don't leave, still got her. But if she be like, well, go on now, you need me to help you pack? Then he still try. I'm telling you now, you put me out, I ain't coming back. No, the door's not locked, it's open. I'm telling you now, you're going to need food and groceries. You ain't never brought none when you were here. I'm telling you. You're going to need a car to get around. You ain't never let me drive your car anyway. Matter of fact, it ain't even working. Isn't it ironic that in certain cases, here we go, Jesus gave the miracle first and addressed the issue later. I want to subtopic this and see if five people jump for you. A miracle in advance. Hold on. How are you going to act when God advances you a miracle and says, hey, you actually don't deserve this. Now, I don't care. I feel good 
what you say, I've been in that situation where I needed my paycheck a week early. Forget that week in the whole thing. I need. So when given a miracle in advance, Dr. Sharon, could this suggest that miracles, here I go, are sometimes given in advance so that the person can comprehend within themselves that the miracle should become an incentive to stop doing what you were doing. All right, I can't. God gives us miracles in advance as an incentive. Now, I want to bless about five or six of you because I thought I had a whole church. And thank some of you for not being rude to walk out because the game don't start to four. So let me say this to 15 of you with a mouth. I'm going to give some of you credit because what your sin or addiction is, it's strong. So I'm going to give you an A for effort because you don't do it as often as you used to. But some of you other knuckleheads, I'm not giving y'all that. You getting an F because not of what you doing, but the quality of the person that you're doing it with. When we trace your sin to the person, we're like, what? Look at certain folk that ain't moving because you might be that what? You pregnant by who? He ain't even got no job. He got 12 more kids. What in the world? Now you're stuck for at least 18 years. Oh, y'all, you're going to be in a case for child support, chasing somebody, missing out on life because where sin took you? Sometimes it's not, it's not the indecency of the sin. It's the indecency of the person. Now, let me be transparent. I shouldn't do this online, but I'm risky. I'm doing this for my members, so I'm being risky now. And Brother Lamar will determine whether to leave it up or take it down. The people that are members of my church, your pastor is transparent. I have sinned before. Have you ever heard that? Oh, no, say it louder. I'm still that man, but what I'm trying to tell y'all is I have moments in my humanity where my judgment gets cloudy because of my anger management issue at that time based upon who's trespassing if it's my daddy i'm hurt but i ain't hurt enough to do something stupid but if it's a person that ain't never paid a bill paid me attention and you step to me trying to tell me off something in me does not know how to translate that moment I wish I had some more people telling the truth. And the way I handle it sometimes does not look like a Christian. Thank you, Reverend Butler. He said, been there. I need this help. I've sinned before. But in any of my lifetime in 60-something years that I've fallen short from the grace and the glory of God, which all have... I have made sure, and I don't know why people don't know how to digest this, that whoever I've sinned with or around, that they were saved. I made sure that they had Christ in them 
not to make the ones without Christ never want him. And when we sinned in whatever we have done, I told God, I ain't coming to you by myself. Oh, y'all mighty quiet. Because the biggest sin is if meat offend my brother, I eat no meat. Y'all don't hear me. But you cannot use your life and be a stumbling block to those who don't know him. Everybody's still quiet. A person with a cold cannot give a person with a cold a cold. So when me and me alike sin, like Adam and Eve, we both go to God. And we both have to be restored. But if I'm with the sinner and I go to God, God says, what did you do with the possibility? See, the penalty is going to be more harsh. Y'all quiet because I just stopped a potential person from wanting to know my father. You that go around as Christians sinning with sinners easily, there's a penalty for that. You can never lead that person to God. Oh, there's some fine worldly girls I would like to date. Some fine ones that I got connections to. Jada, Janet, all of them. Nikki, Megan the Stallion, all them bookers. I don't care who it is. I ain't been to no parties. I ain't bought no baby oil. But there are some people. Now, only you sinners like a, ooh. See, saints understand. Some of you made a face because you would have went to that party. That's your problem. You're drawn to sin. I told people who don't know the game, the baby oil was not baby oil. You know nothing about the streets, so stay in your seat. A product can be hid invisible in the oil that when applied to the body, it makes one unconscious. Now, unless you've been a dealer, you need to sit. Because the street knew what was meant by a thousand bottles. Don't act like y'all ain't been sinners and went to after parties. After the party, it's the hotel lobby. You know, don't know them also. And if your girl start acting up. Then you take her friends. Scooby dooby doo wop a doo we do. Guess what? America, we love you. We made the rules for the games you kids playing. I'm almost finished now. I believe that the miracles in advance are God's way of giving you an incentive to make better decisions. Are you going to continue doing what you did or can you decrease what you're doing? If you cannot decrease or desist, stay in the situation you're in, lest a worse thing. See, everybody's quiet. Let me give three examples and see if you understand how sin works. On these three examples, I've got two more paragraphs, then I want to yell. Let's see if you catch it. If one acquires a physical injury or breaks a body part in the gym, it is likely caused by you moving that body part in the wrong way. You put that body part under an awkward position. Or two, for those who ain't screaming, you tried to lift too much weight. Your ego got the best of you. 
I, and now you're talking about I got a sprain in the gym. You didn't have to get a sprain. But when you put your body in positions that it is not conditioned or built to be in, injury is coming. Oh, the middle people got quiet. He abused his last two women, but he loves you. Well, everyone can change. I'm with you. But don't you be the scapegoat to see whether the person changed. God can cure people of HIV and AIDS. But if I know someone has full-blown AIDS and they tell me I'm going to get out of it respectfully. I don't have enough love. See, I can't get enough for you. See, Cookie had enough love for magic. Oh, yeah. But they were married. And her love for him led him to the law. And some kind of way, he has no trace. Oh, yeah. Of it at all. That's a miracle. But when you've been told in advance what's wrong. And you volunteer yourself. Y'all quiet in the back over here. You deserve what you get. When a man's ex call you and she ain't jealous of you because she look better than you and got more than you and she tell you, baby, I'm just trying to help you. What are you cussing her out for? She already got half from the marriage. She got more than you're going to ever get. You got to start over with him. She trying to help a home girl out. I'll say it's quiet over here too. So that tells me there's a problem over here with this conversation. God loves some of you so much he's got his past fighting for your future. How does that sound? Got somebody from his yesterday saying to you, don't do it. Girlfriend, I don't hear no women, but girl, don't do it. You ain't me. Oh, you keep on moving that head all you want to. That head gonna be on the swivel. Don't do it, girl. Example number two, if you are born healthy and later on you become a diabetic, most of the time it's attached to your diet. You took your body out of its balance. And now you're a diabetic and what you need now is insulin or whatever you need with changing your diet. But a miracle is God cleaning up everything without your assistance possibly giving you a brand new pancreas i don't hear nobody and and now he's got the doctor mesmerized the doctor is like uh are you the same person that came here last month look somebody tell me i want to be that person i need to be that person let me give a third example which is raunchy then i'm going to my clothes if your marriage needs a miracle, most of the time it's because of indiscretions. I can't get women to talk at all. Y'all done been abused real bad. And someone in the marriage is irresponsible. And there are one or two type of people. You have one type of woman and man who's built to put up with you and your imperfections. Yeah. Then you've got the other group that says, if you ever put your hands on me. Yeah. See, look how quiet it got. You're going to wish to God. Then you got that group, if you touch my children the wrong way. 
if you touch my daughter who's your stepdaughter in an indiscretionary pattern, don't go to sleep. See, everybody's quiet right now. You won't even respond on realities. I can't even get you a miracle because I can't get you to be real. Fake people don't get miracles. If he's my husband, he's the head of my house, he does whatever he wants. Mm -mm. If I get married, she my wife, but she better not do whatever she wants. She go in them bank accounts too often, and that money be missing. She better call her mama, because she got to move. I didn't think I had to call you. Oh no, you got to call me. See, everybody quiet. Well, she gonna need her own money. That's fine. She can have that. But if you dig into anything that say TMH in there, oh, you better hear the Holy Ghost say, call him. <laughs> Love don't give you permission to do whatever you want to do to people. If my illusionary wife has a closet full of uh, St. Saint, Saint, Saint John Louis Fendi and I go in there because I don't like it and I just throw it away one day. And she come in, have you seen my Gucci? Nah. You see my Louis, it was too short anyway. I... See, she's not my kid. I don't get to touch her clothes and throw them out as if there's my teenager. You definitely don't touch what you didn't buy. Look at some of the men now looking crazy like, Bishop, for real? You don't get to do that. Who raised you like that? So men can bring friends in the house because we the head of the house. The woman say hello, walk in her room. She don't like him. But if she bring a friend, we'd be like, get her out of my house. What? How does the rule change? Because I pay the bill. Negro, you are not her daddy. I walk in my house. She got a friend I don't like. I'm going to do what she would do. I'm going to be like, hello, hello, good night. If I really don't like, I'm going to come in and out three times for some food. We got any food? Can y'all cut the TV down? It ain't on. Cut it down anyway. I'll make it difficult for her friend to stay. Never treat your spouse like a child in the presence of anybody. Men who do that, you don't have my respect at all. Use a boy. Now, as real men, we can handle that any way you choose. You, who, who, who raised us to be like this? So for that reason, all of us, I'm about to preach, needs to get to a place called Bethesda. Oh, you didn't like how I got there. Bishop, please break that down. Elder Curry and y'all, I will. Elder Mary, Murphy and all of you, catch this and somebody scream. Bethesda means house of mercy. I can live better with a person that's not a mercenary because there are things they don't like about me when you love somebody love should come with mercy all right it's for goodness i'm gonna preach and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life Church.
Church is one of the most unmerciful institutions. Come on, talk to me. You come with a problem, you leave with two more. Church is... You come looking to show love to somebody and the person you want to show love to don't even like you and you're like, what's going on? You come to bring resolve and it becomes more of a mess. Look, church. But that's the means. Beth always means house. Some say house of, but it means house. Of is based upon the suffix. All right, like Bethel, the suffix house of God. Y'all ain't talking. Come on, talk loud. Beth Judah, the house of praise. Beth Sesda, Beth Sesda, the house of mercy. Descriptive, having five porches. Porches. When I say five porches, I prophesy that in Jesus' name. Five porches. Having, see, y'all got jealous, but having. Bethesda having five porches. There are five, and then I'm going to my notes. There are five porches in this house of mercy. Five. I'm going to see who catch it. It's the number of grace. Your grace and mercy brought me through. I'm living each moment. Oh, some of y'all, because of you. I want to thank you and praise you too because your grace and mercy there is grace in mercy let me after this Dr. Barbara I am done because I'm sorry that I bored all of you Grace. Grace and mercy. No, no. They have relatable concepts. But they also have distinct nuances. They have relatable concepts. But they have distinctive nuances. This is for the educated and the elevated. After this, we can go to church. Grace, somebody shout grace, is God's unmerited favor, which means you're getting what you don't deserve. Look at somebody and tell them I've experienced grace over and over and over. Come on, and over and over again. Grace is God's love bestowed upon undeserving individuals. It is a gift that cannot be earned. Grace empowers people to do what they are incapable of doing. Which is God's will and live a perfect life. Grace y'all see what, has a forgiveness component. Grace includes forgiveness of sins and shortcomings. But mercy sounds a little like grace. But the nuance is so distinctive. When I read mercy, those who can compare the two, please scream so I don't feel like I wasted it. Mercy is a compassionate action. Mercy is the act of compassion or kindness towards someone who deserves to be punished. They deserve to suffer. Mercy! I'm going to need you in a minute. It's a decision to show leniency to someone who should die. Mercy! Is a person who wants to constantly relieve you 
of pressure. Even though you've brought so much pressure upon them. Mercy. Often involves relieving someone from a difficult situation and alleviating them from their pain. Before I go into the other notes, because y'all have made me mad, I might as well say this. Yay, though I walk. Through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, y'all gonna miss it, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table. For me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil. And my cup runneth over. Surely I. Surely. Surely, 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 goodness, and what else? Oh, y'all ain't there. Goodness and what? You don't have to go after mercy. Mercy shall follow you. Oh, the days of your life. Now, that mercy has to be followed by an instruction. Uh, Lord, that mercy, do I have 50 people ready to go with me? Has to be followed by an instruction. Oh, oh Lord, uh, that mercy Y'all too quiet over here. Get on out. It's contingent upon a promise. If you read Psalms 23 verse 6, you would see on the back end. It says this mercy is only given to those who make a promise to dwell in the house of the Lord forever I want to preach to 30 people none of y'all that came to church today are leaving here without a stalker that stalker's gonna follow you back to your address tomorrow to your job you're gonna have to ask the stalker why you keep following me? Ask the stalker. What is your name? The stalker's gonna say, My name is Mercy. Because you need me everywhere you go. Grab somebody's hand, let's have church, and say, Neighbor, if I were you, do yourself a favor. Take the Lord God with you. Everywhere. Everywhere you go. You're going to need him. You're going to need him. Everywhere. Everywhere you go. Look 
at somebody and tell them the reason that brother David did not die in the valley. He saw death there. He saw the shadow of death. But say, neighbor, you can't see a shadow unless there's light somewhere. Even though death was around, God shined a light on it and said, forget death. Goodness and mercy is going to follow you. Lean on somebody and say, oh. Oh! 
your neighbor now and say, I see you different. I heard a lot of things, but I put on my glasses. And the name of my glasses is called Mercy. I don't see you like everybody else see you. I see you through the eyes of God. You are victorious. You are a conqueror. You are the head and not the tail. You are the first and not last. You are. You are. You are. You are. Everything that God said you are. Shout yeah! Shout yeah! Shout yeah! Well, somebody else is here.
If you got three folk around you that looks like they're a praiser, this one word ought to make them scream. Just look at all three of them and say, done, 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 D-O-N-E. closing I should have been dead sleeping in my grave but God told death, hold your hand. Let them be. Give them a second round to live. Cancel the penalties. Let them get out on good behavior. Atanamanchi Otanahasia. Holy Ghost Shandai, Holy Ghost is here. I said the Holy Ghost in Mahashia. Holy Ghost is here. Some of you are missing the opportunity to tell him thank you. So loves you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more. Oh, my, my. <laughs> I love you, Jesus. Ooh, I worship. I worship and adore you. Just wanna tell you, tell you, why? Oh, don't sing it to me. Sing it to the Lord, sing it to the Lord. I love you, Jesus. Oh, 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 
One more time, visitors and members. Raise your voice and say, I love you. Just want to tell you I love you More than anything More than anything Somebody say I love you I worship Just want to tell you One last time, y'all listen. Let me hear the whole church. Just tell the Lord. I love you, Jesus. bowed eyes closed Lord I love you more than anything Lord I love you Say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Said, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Don't say it to me, sing it to him. I love you, Jesus. Oh. softly heads bowed eyes closed can't wait till Wednesday the prophetic is strong this afternoon but we're gonna let holy convocation have it but most of you didn't believe me you're going home with mercy you're going home and some areas that were postured to assassinate you God's gonna turn it around you're going to be assisted where you should have been assassinated. 
You have to believe this. A little lower. I know we can barely hear you already, but a little lower. Your life is going to change drastically for the better. This is a cliche, but it's a serious word today. What the devil meant for our evil. God's going to turn it around for our good. The devil's mad. Y'all keep playing that stuff, but keep that beat. Don't slack on it. Just me and the drummer. Late in the midnight hour, God's gonna turn it around. It's gonna work in your favor. Oh, 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 oh. Late in the midnight hour, God, it's gonna work. Come on with me and help me say my late. Oh God, it's gonna work. It's gonna work in your face. It's gonna work. It's gonna work in your face. It's gonna work. It's gonna work. Speak it. It's gonna work. Put my. It's gonna work in my. Whose favor? It's gonna work in my favor. All right, heads bowed, eyes closed. Take me out of that jail. Your grace and mercy brought me through. Hold your neighbor's hand. I'm living each moment because of you. I want to thank you. And praise you too. Your grace and mercy brought me through. One more time. Your grace and mercy brought me through. Somebody's being healed on our streaming platform. I'm living each moment because of you. I want to thank you and praise you too. Your grace and mercy brought me through let the church say yes sing to the Lord yes sing to the Lord yes 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. A simple yes will do. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes. No music now. Stop it. Let them have it. Stop all of it.
We're going home, but I want to know that man that's visiting that danced. He's behind to Tamika. Where are you from? Talk loud. You just moved here? Come to me quickly. Hold my hand. I don't touch people much. But I want to ask you to hire. That's, that's your wife draw closer. That's your wife come closer. Come closer. That's your wife. I'm going to speak another new home on your life. Because I know this is your concern. I will until the appointed time. I've never done this in this city. I've done it other places. I will some kind of way cover you until God's ready. You said what? God told me to come and join this ministry. Okay. Now notice what he just did was showed you mercy. We came after you. You didn't even have to say it. You're the first member only that I've ever said, I will come after you. I believe in you and this woman. God says, three years the devil tried to storm, but God said the storm is passed over. When I lay hands, I have recognized that God is taking out my weeds to give me grass. I'm a prophet. I've recognized it. And grass don't grow fast, weeds do. I accept these fresh blades of grass. But I'm gonna my sicolo. I'm gonna lay my hands upon you and I'm gonna ask God to change that address. I know y'all will have peace at home because God's gonna make your new home a Bethesda. When I touch him, and God says, tell you, you think visibly that your ministry failed, but God said it didn't fail, it shifted. There's still room. When I lay hands on both of these, hold on, how long y'all been married? One year. Yeah, something's crazy is going on. How old are you? 33? Because God says, if you believe, you're going to know you joined the right church because God says, after today, he'll give you a home. He's going to give you a good place. You married the white wife. And then God says, I'm going to shift her, her eggs, her ovaries. God says, I'm going to give her the child that you wanted. I'm going to show you. You'll be all right with your past. Look at me. You'll be all right with the past. You'll be fine. I will never say all that I see, but as your spiritual cover right now, you'll be fine. The past will be fine. When I lay hands on both of these, you that know what a loud Shabbat is, do it now in Jesus' mighty name. got to is the man that was chef Nina's guest here is he still here the man who chef Nina invited I wanted to tell him something so good but he is not present hallelujah He's not present. So, so, so I'm going to give it to the man that's in front of him. Sir, with the black shirt, come meet me. Yeah, come meet me down here. And let me talk to you. Is there a praise in this house? Draw closer. How did you find out about this church? You looked it up. You looked Shabbat up. What made you do that? You want to come visit. 
So was it that you heard of the church, you heard of me, and then you looked it up? You heard of me? Okay, and through me, now you hear of the church. So you were looking me up, and it pointed you in this direction. Did you know I was going to be here? Good. Now, what I just did is what Jesus did to the man on the porch. I started a conversation. Are you prepared to have your own business? You said yes. Thank you for not taking the route that the man took and said, I've got nobody to help me. Thank you for not saying that to me. Because God says, tell him in the next 90 days, I'm going to change his finances. I'm going to change every... Wait a minute. Somebody shout glory. Is that your wife? Y'all have kids? How many? Yeah, because I thought God was playing... In this day and time, the uh, housing market is difficult here in our city, state, and the world. But the Lord says, I'm going to bless him with mercy by giving him a house with a room for each child. Now, I don't know. One of them won't have to be there alone. You came, you saw, you conquered. I'm going to lay hands on you. You're going to start having dreams. You already have a little prophetic in you. It's already there. You, 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 you wouldn't fully call it that, but it's in you. And I'm going to activate it, if that's a word that I can use, by stirring it up through laying on of the hands. My church know I don't do this often. I don't do it around the world often. If you look at videotapes, you won't see it often. But today is a laying on of hands kind of day. When I lay my hands on you, I want you to believe that you and your wife's life will shift. And wait a minute. When is your birthday? January the 16th. Y'all about to have the best few years of your life. Lift your hands. When I touch this brother, all of you that know how to praise for other people, do it one more time. Do it in Jesus' name. Come on. Hey. Whoa. Whoa. I want the woman in the pink to come. Short bob hair. Come here quickly. Then I'm done. Hallelujah. Stand before me. What is your name? Ashley. What church you go to? You remember here? I had no idea. Draw closer. I am going to say after touching him that in the future, I'm going to have to sit with you about how prophecy works. You have it. It's in you. You have it because you can tell who's fake, who's phony, who's not real. You're doing your best to stay away from certain people. The Lord says, tell her, if she desires a home, I'll do it. But I had a condo waiting for her. Do you have children? I take the condo. You don't have no children. I ask God to put me in the condo first. Less work, less responsibilities. Then you can flip that condo and in the future get you a house. Does that make sense? All right, raise both hands. We're going to get you there. Amen. Oh, Jesus. What in the world? Have you been married? Are you married? Yeah, because I see a man coming and going. He's coming and going. He's coming and going. How long you been engaged? Since January. Where is he? Home like where? In this city? In this city? Hey, Amen. Listen, I'm your wife, Pastor. And if I were you, I'd start getting closer to her at this altar. Come close with God, and then you'll have God's child. Now, I know it might make you a little frustrated. But at the end of the day, when God does what he's going to do in your family, to show her family who she is, you're going to be thankful. Just in case he got to run this tape back. 
Hands up, Sister Ashley. Hey, hey. Good God Almighty. Somebody pray. Namansi, I tell ya. Y'all sound selfish. I have one more, then we're going home. Woman in the back, you got on black and a green skirt. Come here. Let me talk to you. Green pants, let me talk with you. Hallelujah. Nobody ushers who don't praise, hear? Because they need worship around them. Come closer. I, I've been watching you on and off for about an hour, and the Lord kept showing me the number two. I finally asked him, what does it mean? He said, tell her she will own two businesses. Tell her she's already in one, even though it's not fully shaken or shapened. But tell her I shall also keep her from the ravenous wolves that will come from the left, right, in the darkness of the night. Because from your mother's womb, you were chosen to succeed. God, and they be out so. And God said, I made a promise with your mama that I do the rest of what I'm doing now. Your story needs to be in the book. Because now God is fast forwarding so many things that I can't believe you've experienced. But he said, tell her one day she needs to put this in the book. It will help other young ladies. It will help them see their potential. It would help them see their purpose. It would help them see their journey. Lift your hands. Point your hands this way and at the count of three you will praise for her. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my shando robo. He shanda mani ansio koya. All right, praise him, Shabak. In Jesus' mighty name. I can't hear your mouths. Whew. Hold hands, bow your heads. Hold hands. Hiya! Can't wait till Wednesday. Hallelujah. This is the house of mercy. But this is also a prophetic house. I've been holding back for almost three and a half years. But God is ready to come out in a minute. Thank you, Jesus. Sharon Davis, let me say something to you. And I'll text you about the text that you sent me. But I want to say this to you straight from heaven. God is going to revamp the mind of one of your children. The mind. Because they're going to have to be able to handle how long they will have to wait but for the money, but not for the exposure. The girl has two basketballs in her hand. She's dribbling with both hands in front of me. She's going to tour Europe, Switzerland, Germany. If she continues and does not stop, God said, what will stop her is what's going on mentally. I must keep her mind on her grades. God says, I'm going to make her one of the greatest success stories of your family. Protect her gift. Her gift is in her hand. She is not what everybody else is saying. People want to put spiritual words on children. God says she is not that right now at all. She is a child graced for sports. She's a tadamonso. 
sees a child that I'm going to make bring Christ into the sports arena. She will fly safely across this country. If you're going to manage her, make sure she get the best money ever. Hold hands. That's all I'll say. We don't have to be perfect. Our saying is we wake up to be better every day. But we cannot continue doing what we have always done or a worse thing will come upon us all. I want God to take us higher. I can't hear you. I said I want the Lord to take us higher. That may begin with you having to change your company. Do that quickly so that you can get back on track and become the greatest success story of your family and your lineage. I'm fighting to be the ultimate success story of the whole family. Not that I'm better than all of them, but I have a passion and a hunger to hear that name become as strong as Rockefeller and Kennedy. You want to hear your family's name become strong so that when that name is mentioned, it makes people sit up straight and be like, it's a privilege and an honor to meet you. And Mahashiando, are you okay with that? Your heads bowed, your eyes closed. I'm asking everyone who makes less than 30 grand to give a $20 off and everyone that makes over 60, I need you to sow a magnificent $80 this morning. Their 20 and your 80 makes 100. We're going to pick up 80% of the slack of those that make less than we do. You that are blessed to have a lot of money, we need you to give a sacrificial offering. I don't have a lot of money, but I have sufficient funds, so I give more than most because I made a vow to the Lord that if he took me to a certain place, I would never give like I used to. The higher he takes you, the better your offering should look. Can I get a witness? Yeah. If your wife stays with you and she's better every year, that ring, that diamond ought to get a little bigger every few years. Yeah. It just shows the world that you appreciate who you're committed to, amen? Yeah. So for some that ain't got money, start off with a real small one now because that diamond has to get bigger every year. The one on my pinky, I change it every five years, I make it bigger. Now that I'm thinking about marriage in the future, I'm not putting nothing else in there. I'm going to take this one out. And we're going to start like that. Somebody say amen. amen. You got to have a plan, babies. You got to have a plan. Amen. You that are going to give the 20 come first. Not you that are giving the most. You that are giving the 20 come and be proud of your gift. Because one day you'll be able to do much better. One day you'll be able to do much better. If you will only trust me, trust me, trust me. I love my white member. Because she came and she said, you on fire. I like white people. Can't stand you black people, but I like white people. They wait till we go out. Pop, you killed it. Tell me while I'm in here. You that are going to give the 80 because God has been good. Come now, please, and be blessed. $80 or more, you're coming. If you're giving $80 or more, you're coming. Thank you. Oh, I'm happy. I got my offer. That's all I can say. Let me touch a little more money first. Trust me. 
Hello, married lady. Thank you. Trust me. Trust me. Everyone standing. Dr. Mixon will come, executive pastor, give closing words, send us home. Musicians, praise team, choir, let's be awesome this week. Let's not look for accolades, let's, let's not look for the praises of men. Let's show people how we do everything to the glory and the honor. Can I get a witness of God? You will watch me push other preachers as if it was me. You will see me in the background showing you how to act when others are being used by God. Follow suit. Amen. Amen. Be kind to how many people? Yeah. Don't get in anyone's business that you can't help resolve the issue. Don't follow them around. Don't ask them what they're eating or drinking. Just be saved yourself. I want to hear good reports about this church. Amen. I don't, I don't know why I'm led to do this. I, listen, I'll give you all 30 seconds and then we'll do it again in two weeks. If you want to make this your church home, because you know this is a good ministry, come right now. Come out of your seat and come stand down here. I don't hear nobody clapping over there, I tell you. Shabak, are y'all crazy or something? One of the gentlemen is saying, it's been a while since I've been here. Am I still a member? He said, I don't know. You a member back on Hudson? Hudson in here? When last time you been here? Maybe. 2012? Then you ain't a member. <laughs> Driver's licenses expire. Food expire. <laughs> Y'all step on the floor. Step on. I have to do this quick. Look at me. Hold, 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 hold the music. I'm your pastor. I'm not perfect, but I am anointed. I promise you that. I love people from my heart. I am more like Dr. Phil, less Oprah Winfrey. I'm going to make you take responsibility and accountability for what you do and say in private. I want you to be the best version of yourself that you can be. In this church, I'll be very honest, a lot of people come, but a lot of people go, and those that go is because they can't make it through the boot camp. I am not a passive pastor. I'm militant because I only breed winners. I don't hear nobody out there. To know me is to love me, to avoid me is to hate me. Let, let me say that again. I don't allow any of these members in here to call you and or prophesy or pray for you without accountability. If they do, please tell me before you leave here who the crazy one was who did not follow proper protocol. Are y'all following me? I am the cord. They are an extension cord. There's no power until you connect to the original source. I love you. You're going to make it. Two of you are going to get married. I don't want to say who you are, but you're going to make it. My new old member said, I receive it. That's why he back. We got more women, so he back in church. No. He said, thank you. Hey, we know what part he from. All of you, any of you have children? Any of you? I know y'all, you do? 
but this half does not. You. You three don't. May I have your full name? Stephanie Pimenta. Come on, move quick, son. Your Bianca Holyfield. Thank you. Jasmine Bianca Tate. who? Holyfield. I'm making no. sure. Okay, I'm making sure. I'll say call Jasmine him up. Tate. Jasmine, Jasmine Tate. Jasmine Tate. Helen Summers. Nathaniel Mason. Naisha Mason. She know her last name, doc. In one year, most women try to keep their whole name. You did okay, man. Go ahead. Cynthia Jackson. Shane Smith. What? What? <laughs> Shane Smith. He get married today. Jerry Smith. Charlene Richard. Charlene. Charlene. Richards. Richard. Spell it. R I S H E R. Okay, Risha. No, no, I want to know. I thank you all for choosing this church, but most of all for choosing me, for choosing our God. Please know, I've got something special for you, but we're moving quick on this morning. I love you. I'm going to ask only 50 of my members, because normally this whole church will come hug y'all. I'm going to have about 30 of them come hug y'all. The other 70 might not be real, but they still going to come. All right, face, 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 face your new brothers and sisters. Shabbat, come love on them quickly in Jesus' name. Y'all clap better, clap better. We have an extended family and let the mothers come ahead of y'all if they choose. If the mothers choose, they get to go ahead of everyone except the pastors. Down through the years, God's been good to me. Oh, down through the years, God's been good to me. Oh, down through the years, God's been good to me. You know the Lord surely been good to me. I said all of my life, God's been good to me. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, oh. oh, the Lord, Lord, you know the Lord. 